All right, we're gonna try that one more time. Hello, everyone. All right. To the Golden Lion Nation faculty, staff, students, esteemed guests, and my distinguished colleagues, I bring you greetings. I am Trent Wills, Vice President of the Student Government Association and junior majoring in agriculture business. Tonight, I have the honor to preside over this year's Black History Celebration. This is the first time since the pandemic that we have had the chance to be gathered in one room to celebrate our history, Black history as a collective. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very exciting year. We have reached 150 years of this great university. Yeah. Absolutely. So for 150 years, we have stood boldly unwavering from the abolishment of slavery to the trials and tribulations of civil injustice, and even through a global pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, as of today, February 27, 2023, Dear Mother is still flourishing and still standing. Let's give us a round of applause. So ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you that you take a moment to ensure that all cellular devices are silenced and to please stand for the posting of the colors. We will also have our national anthem and our black national anthem by our Vesper Choir.
We'd like to thank our UAPB ROTC M4 Invest Require for that selection. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All right, the program will commence as follows. You will hear from Mr. and Mrs. UAPB as they bring forth the invocation and the official greeting. Following, we have Mr. Zach Webb to state our purpose, which then leads to our special presentation by our UAPB spirit team. Please receive them in that audience and please give them a round of applause. Greetings, Golden Lion family. My name is Charles Harris III, your eighth Miss University of Arkansas at Palm Bluff. Will you please bow your heads for a word of prayer? Lord God, we thank you for the significance of this month. We lift up and thank you for our black brothers and sisters who have shaped history. We thank you for the opportunity to learn and reflect, particularly at this time, here and now. We pray that the learning happening in schools, homes, and workplaces will be meaningful and deep-rooted. We pray for open hearts and minds and spirits willing to learn and be transformed by you. May this month be a time of curiosity and sharing conversations and celebrations, challenge and encouragement. Heavenly Father, help us to dig deeper, look closer, and think bigger. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, Golden Lion family and supporters. I am Ariana Jackson, the 93rd Miss University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Our UAPB mission speaks promoting and subsidize excellence academic programs that integrate quality, instruction, research, and student learning experiences. And tonight is sure an, a historical night for learning. Therefore, I welcome you all to our Black History Month celebration, featuring the remarkable Mr. Martin Luther King III. I know his remarks will inspire and challenge us to be our best. 
So I implore you to listen, take notes, and be considerate of how you should contribute to our Golden Lion legacy. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I have the purpose of charging you with your purpose of being here to the distinguished guests here, all of you, uh, I believe, I believe all of our deans and representatives are here. I thank you for being here. Obviously, when you woke up this morning and looked in the mirror, you didn't have to remind yourself that you were black. It's not because of what we went through when we were brought over here on ships against our will and put in slavery. No, it's not because of what they did on Black Wall Street in Oklahoma. No, it's not because of Jim Crow, of what they did to black men, lynching them from trees or the highest post they, that they could find. No, you're not here because of just police brutality. You're here because you choose to overcome all of that. You're here because you have chosen to not respond and take the mindset of I could, but I won't. I could cuss that boss out that wants to fire me because of the color of my skin. I could ball my fist up and get upset every time somebody under their breath says the N word in Walmart. I could get upset every time I'm looked over or picked over because I don't look the same as you and I'm not being judged for what's in my brain. I could respond because every time I get pulled over, I wonder if it's gonna be my last day on earth. You did something bigger than that. When your head got low, you remembered to lift your eyes unto the hills which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. When it got dark outside, you remembered that the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Your purpose here it's because you believe in a brighter future. You believe in this man's father. You believe that he had a dream, but we've only had a glimpse of the dream. We are not contempt of where we are now in 2023. I wish somebody would clap because I'm, I know I'm preaching. You're simply here because you wake up every day and you rise and you get after it, regardless of the color of your skin. You're here today, or tonight rather, because you have an appreciation and you will continue fighting for a dream and a better tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give them another round of prize. That was a dynamite purpose. All right, as we get situated here. All right, how's everybody doing today? I need a little bit more energy. How's everybody doing today? All right, all right. All right, so at this time, we'll have our spirit team.
Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, first, to our Chancellor, Chancellor Alexander, to the First Lady, uh, uh, Veronica, and the family here, and our, our Vice Chancellor uh, that are here today. Um, we have been given a task that we're not normally used to. And uh, normally we dancing and tumbling and stunting. So we're gonna do something a little bit different today um, for black history. Uh, we kind of toyed with what we're going to do, but for the past few weeks, we've been dealing with black history. And at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff Spirit Team, our motto is, I watched, I listened, and I learned. Let me get everybody to say that. I watched, I listened, and I learned. Okay, this is the thing that we do as, as far as the spirit team. So the team decided that what they wanted to do, they wanted to share with you all the history of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff spirit team. And so they're gonna share uh, some of our alumni that have gone on, um, have graduated and some of their accomplishments. So you know that it's more than just what you see at the ball games, more than just the, uh, the skills, more than just the uniforms that you see that this is the melanin uniforms today for black history. So we're gonna start, um, we need to get a microphone. So just be a little patient. We're gonna just gonna go through just a few of them. Check. Is it not on? Here, give it. Here, give it. Good evening. I'm representing Dr. Arnitha Latrice Murdoch Brooks. She cheered from 1993 to 1995 and graduated from the Tuskegee University School of Veterinary Medicine in 2003. She is currently employed at the Department of Defense, Little Rock Air Force Base, as the head veterinarian. She watched, she listened, and she learned. Good evening. I am representing Miss Brandis McGuire. I cheered from 2007 to 2010. I majored in industrial technology engineering. I started my career at Ball Aerospace Engineer in Denver, Colorado. I am currently employed at Energy Incorporated in Little Rock, Arkansas. I watched, I listened, and I learned. Good evening, I am Sienna Blunt. Sienna is a 2022 graduate majoring in industrial technology. Sienna is currently employed at Energy Headquarters in New Orleans as an engineer management support group. Sienna watched, she listened, and she learned. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I am representing Mr. Curtis Norwood he chaired from 1989 to 1992, and he is now the CEO of Cheesecake on Paint on Point, sorry, in Little Rock, Arkansas. It also is a fitness instructor for Get Your Mind Right Fitness. He watched, he listened, and he learned. Good evening, everyone. I am presenting Miss Kendra Porter. She cheered from 2011 to 2014, majoring in industrial technology engineering. She is currently employed at Manufacturing Engineering Bell in Texton, Texas. And currently, she just won the Black Engineer of the Year Award in, for 2023. She watched. She, would, she listened and she learned. 
Good evening, everyone. I have the honor of representing Mr. Leroy Brown. Leroy came to UAPB after his mother died. His first semester, he made a 3.9 GPA. He came to me and said he wanted to go home. You are not, you, no, you are staying. Leroy is now the Associate Dean of Students, and he is the assistant with the SPIRIT team. He watched, he listened, and he learned. Good, e oh. Good evening, I am presenting Dr. Adrian Hatchett. She cheered from 2009 to 2012, majored in biology, graduated from medical school, medical school at UAMS. I am employed at East Arkansas Family Health Center as a family medicine director in Memphis, Tennessee. She watched, she listened, and she learned. Good evening, everyone. I am presenting Mr. Ray Anthony Ellis III. I cheer from 2006 to 2008, graduated from UALR Boeing School of Law, passed the New York State Bar Exam in 2019, currently employed as the private attorney for the United States Federal Trade Commission in Washington, D.C. He watched, he listened, and he learned. Good evening, everyone. I'm presenting Ms. Shauna Grant, the granddaughter of Mr. U.S. Grant. She cheered from 2009 to 2013 while majoring in chemistry. She is employed as a field chemist in Dallas, Texas, and also works for the Army and Air Force Exchange Program. She watched, she listened, and she learned. Hello, everyone. I am presenting Mr. Frank Dorsey IV. Mr. Dorsey came to UAPB to try out for the spirit team, but he didn't make the team. He was so impressed with the team, he stayed as the team manager. He graduated from UAPB in 2013. Today, he is the Dean of Student Involvement and Leadership at UAPB. He watched, he listened, and he learned. Good evening, everyone. I am representing Mr. Kazel Timpani. I cheered from 2014 till 2017. I'm a U.S. Marine Corps vet, and I'm currently employed at Pinkerton as the director who advises Fortune 500 companies head located in Tennessee, Arkansas. He watched, he listened, and he learned. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Oh, we got one more? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I am representing Mr. Mark Robinson, Jr. He cheered from 2012 to 2017. He was majoring in industrial technology engineering, and he is now currently working at um, ooh, sorry. <laughs> solar turbines in San Diego, California. He is also a professional bodybuilder. He watched, he listened, and he learned. Ah. Okay, thank. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Those three words mean a lot. Um, this has been a, a big journey. Um, back in 1980, the uh, little brown girl was the only black cheerleader at Watson Chapel High School here. And she had to overcome a lot of obstacles. In 1981, she was the, the this only black, black girl, all American for the United States of America. In 1982, she was the only black NCA instructor for the United States of America. In 1989, this young little brown girl came to UAPB. And she has been here since then. And that little brown girl is me. And for the past 32 years, 
I have been the spirit team coach here at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. And I watched and I listened and I learned. And I, <clears throat> thank you. I too had a dream. And I had a dream that the success of this spirit team uh, for the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. And each one of these kids leave here with a dream. And in 2015, we launched a campaign. And just so happened that that camp campaign was UAPB, our dream is the spirit team. And so we thank you guys for listening to us tonight. Uh, we normally perform, but we, this is what we wanted to do. And we thought this would be more effective for Black History Month. And I want to thank the kids for uh, doing something different. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, they watched, they listened, and they learned. That was our UAPB spirit team. Just one second, UAPB, who are we rooting for? I need a little more. Who are we rooting for? One more time. Who are we rooting for? All right. So, as I've said earlier, that we are on our 150th year. But will you, I have a question for you all. Will you go on the legacy of the, explore the legacy of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff with me? We're going to explore the 150 years of our great institution. So without further ado, we'll get to the legacy of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. The legacy of the University of Arkansas at Palm Bluff has seen unprecedented growth in power, purpose, and pride. Remarkably, the institution survived against such great odds from within and those from outside its walls during its existence. The institution survived partly because of great men of wisdom and determination like Joseph Carter Corbin, Jefferson Ish, Robert Malone, Dr. John Brown Watson, and Dr. Lawrence A. Davis, Sr. To understand the history of this institution is to understand what the state of Arkansas has done to educate its black population. This population, recently free from slavery, was determined to get an education against all odds. Branch Normal College was created on April 25, 1873 as a branch of Arkansas Industrial University, now the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. It was on the corner of Lindsay and Sevier Street where the story of our university began. 
Led by our founder and first principal, Joseph Carter Corbin, French Normal will open its doors on September 27, 1875. Despite starting with only seven students, the dream of education quickly outgrew this one-story building. The university has undergone numerous changes over the years and has sought to evolve from new locations to significant expansions and building renovations to ensure it can always provide opportunities. It was in 1882 when a 20-acre plot of land on the west side of Pine Bluff would become our new home. During this time, the university found an identity as an agricultural school, becoming a land-grant institution in 1892. The campus grew significantly from its previous location, now housing state-of-the-art mechanic and carpenter shops. All of this was reflected in our name changes during Arkansas A&M School in 1921 and Arkansas A&M College in 1927. By 1929, the vision that started in that one-story dilapidated building came here, the place we call home today. While our new home began with eight buildings, many we still walk through, it quickly grew and has continued growing. Named after some of our brightest doctors, scientists, athletes, professors, and kind-hearted giving individuals, these places continue to foster equally impressive women and men. It is representative of the progress we have made towards a shared vision under thoughtful leadership. Time passes, locations change, and buildings come and go. Despite this, our history remains with us and can be seen everywhere you look. The dream we all share that began for UAPB 150 years ago continues. Ladies and gentlemen, 150 years. Uh, so this is the turning point of our university, where we are striving for growth here at the university. I don't, I'm not sure if you've seen, if you've walked around the university lately, but we are getting ready for some big improvements, um, especially with our new student engagement center. All right. So as we are drawing near of hearing from our guest speaker of the night, here's the, he is the son of a prominent leader who, who has dedicated his life for, to a fighting civil injustice. But most importantly, a man who loved God. Introducing our guest speaker tonight is our very own Student Government Association President, President Amaya Jordan. Uh, following President Jordan, we will have a selection from our Vesper Choir. President Jordan. Greetings Golden Lions and welcome friends and family. My name is Amaya Jordan and I serve as the Student Government Association President for the school year of 2022 to 2023 and I have both the privilege and the honor to introduce our distinguished speaker, Martin Luther King III. As the oldest son of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Ms. Coretta Scott King, Martin Luther King III is a thought leader on the world stage, a peacemaker, and a negotiator on some of today's most critical national and international platforms for social change. Amplifying the work of his father, Mr. King has devoted his life to promoting, to promoting global human rights and eradicating racism, violence, and poverty. Referred to by his father as the triple evils and the scourge of humankind on every continent except Antarctica. Mr. Keene, his wife Andrea, and daughter Yolanda Renee have taken over leadership of the Drum Major Institute, a nonprofit organization started over 60 years ago. The Drum Major Institute has built a reputation advancing the core mission and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. With the focus on continuing the King legacy through education, action, engagement with world leaders in collaboration with socially conscious organizations, the work of the Drum Major Institute is as important today as it was then. Inspiring each individual to embrace their unique contribution to peace, 
justice, and equity for all through common sense solutions to our most pressing problems. With 40 organizations now funded in the initial round of grants, the Drum Major Coalition has set an ambitious goal of raising and investing $100 million in mobilization efforts ahead as the 2024 election approaches. Immediately following the Vesper Choir selection, we will hear from Mr. Martin Luther King III. Thank you. Good evening. Let me first thank God for the wonderful opportunity to be back in Arkansas and specifically at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. I think I have, I know I've been here before and may have spoken here before. But tonight is a very special night. So first, to Chancellor Alexander and the entire administration, faculty and staff, 
but mostly to you, the students of this great institution, to all the program participants this evening, and especially to the spirit team and the presentation. Now, thank you. What I've quickly learned, Chancellor Alexander, is you have outstanding students, an amazing band, an amazing choir. Yes, you should be proud of that as an institution. Now, before I get into the meat of my presentation, which is not going to be that long, there are two very special friends of mine that are Arkansans. One of them still lives in Atlanta, and the other one is here in Arkansas. Very interesting story about these two gentlemen. One of my dear friends first, Bill Walker. Stand up. And Jerry Gray, both Arkansans. Both of them have something interesting that exists. They both worked in high-level positions for the last Democratic governors that existed. The last Democratic governor Bill worked for here in Arkansas, Governor Beebe, as a cabinet position. And Jerry Gray worked in Atlanta for the last Democratic governor we had. He was the deputy uh, chief of staff of the governor, Governor Roy Barnes. But they also worked with me when I was an elected official. 35 years ago, I was a county commissioner. And both of them also traveled with me around the nation and the world. And so whenever I come to Arkansas, I always have, Jerry may be in Atlanta, but he happens to be here today. Uh, but Bill is, is always here and I cannot, you, you know you have to appreciate your friends. My grandfather used to say, if you're blessed to have one friend, then that is a true blessing. So we're living in a very interesting time in our nation. And the fact that this is the 150th year of this institution is quite profound. Yes. Sixty-five years ago in 1958, my father spoke here. And so in a sense, I'm following in that tradition. But we are in almost the last day of African American History Month. You know, um, it used to be Negro History Week. If you go back and read, you'll find that out. And when we got a a month, it, it, it wasn't a full 31-day month, it was a month with some days missing. So every four years we'll get an extra day or so. But in all seriousness, it is so important that we understand our history. It is said that a people that do not remember their history are doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past. Think about the fact that in 2023, there are those who are trying to exclude our history from teaching us our history. Whether it's Governor DeSantos in Florida or whether in our own state of Georgia, they have created a narrative around the concept called critical race theory that, by the way, is not taught in public primary and secondary school, is only taught in law school. But yet, they have created legislation in certain states that say you cannot teach anything that resembles something called critical race theory, again, that does not exist, except for in law school. So, you know, they tell us that that is called wokeness. And I need to remind some that my father's last message before he was killed 
on April 4th of 1968 was he spoke in Washington at the National Cathedral. And the name of that message was Remaining Awake Through a Great Revolution. And so now we have defined wokeness as something that's wrong, that's moving our nation in the wrong direction, when wokeness really is moving our nation forward. We got to be concerned about this because it impacts all of us. I was in Birmingham a week and a half ago at Alabama Power. And in, it, it was fe around February, middle of February. And the irony of being there, Birmingham and Alabama period, most or many of the victories that we won in the modern civil rights movement were because of Alabama. Montgomery was the bus boycott where Rosa Parks sat down on December 1st in 1955 and, or was arrested. And on December 5th, for 381 days, black folk chose not to ride the buses. And that campaign, Ms. Parks was the heroine and dad was the chief spokesperson. But my point is, that was one victory after 381 days. And then in 1963, 60 years ago, there was the Birmingham campaign and the letter from the Birmingham jail that dad wrote. And then in 1963 was the march on Washington where he delivered the I Have a Dream speech. But also in 1965, there was the Selma to Montgomery march, which gave us the legal right to vote. Of course, that was decimated in 2013 by the U.S. Supreme Court. My higher point is that Alabama was such a critical state that profoundly impacted our history. And yet, the same week that I was there, about four days or five days before, in Tuscaloosa, where the University of Alabama is, students in a high school, 300 of them, walked out because they were told that they could not teach black history prior to 1970, which meant they couldn't talk about slavery. How can you not talk about the cruelest institution that our community has been exposed to? And they couldn't talk about the modern civil rights movement. And so they walked out of school just a few days ago. And then in a state that's not far from here nor far from Alabama, the state of Mississippi, in Jackson, Mississippi, where Jackson State is, and other colleges and universities, in Jackson, Mississippi, Hines County, the governor, who happens to be a Republican, and the legislature that is mostly Republican, has created a super government so that judges will be appointed by the governor and the legislature and a super police force in a city that's 80 percent black. I'm telling you all this because we are, maybe we are asleep. We're not awoke addressing that. We could address all these issues tomorrow if we chose to. And there are so many, many more whether it is drugs running rampant, whether it's crime off the chain, even here in Pine Bluff, crime off the chain. All of these, and you know, when I was a kid, I was told that if you train up a child in the way that they should go, when that child is old, they will not depart from that training. But somewhere, we're not training up our children in the right way. And our society is not creating enough opportunity as well. Now, think about the fact that black folk in America last year spent $1.3 trillion. That's collectively. Think about that would be the eighth, maybe, or seventh largest if it was an independent nation spending money. $1.3 trillion. That's what we spent. But we haven't learned how to retain money in the community. In many communities, money comes in 
and it circulates in that community 12, 15, maybe 20 times, then it goes back out. In our community, money comes in and goes right out. And until we begin to understand that and understand how to not just access capital, but how to build capital, one of the reasons I'm so proud of Bill Walker and Jerry Gray is because they also became businessmen, very successful businessmen, and have businesses. Entrepreneurship, I hope some of you students are majoring in business, creating opportunities for yourself, your family, and the community. We need more and more African-American businesses. Most businesses end up failing because of a lack of capital. There shouldn't be a lack of capital when a community spends $1.3 trillion. Think about that. And so I, I'm, I'm grateful to be here this evening to share information, but to encourage you to utilize this process called education to the highest degree. When I was growing up, my teachers often told me that you needed to master the three R's of reading, writing, and arithmetic. And I would say today we're mastering R's, but the R's of running, rapping, and rhyming. And while it's cool to run, rap, and rhyme, we must master reading, writing, and arithmetic. Why else would you be at a college or university, an institution for higher learning, if you're not committed to learning. You see, because some of you may already have families, but others of you will have families. And it's really about building for the next generation and generations yet unborn. We've seen some very tragic things happen, not just around improper law enforcement, but that's a huge one for our community because it feels like quite frequently a young brother or a young sister is beaten by some police departments. Whether it's most recently Tyree Nichols up the road in Memphis, or whether it was George Floyd, or whether it was Ahmaud Aubrey, or whether the list goes on and on of individuals who've been accosted by policemen, beaten and oftentimes killed. A tragedy that, again, we should not be accepting. We can change all of these things. How do I know? Because my father and his team and my mother and her team, they, they created a few good women and men and they changed the whole dynamic. So I know we still can change things, but we first have to start learning how to work together and not work against each other. We don't have time for jealousy and hatred. Why, why, why are people always hating on each other? And when you really love yourself, then you can love others. I, in fact, I was taught to love myself by my mother and father. I was taught to love my family, I was taught to love my community, and I was taught to love God. Love of self, love of family, love of community, and love of God. We need that formula now even more than ever. Because that's one of the few ways that we can work together to transform and make this nation a better nation. Yes, we have to elect people to office. And I want to say and encourage you, some of you young students, there are students, I assume, that came up when we did the flag who are in the ROTC. Is that correct? Yeah. So when you're in the military and you go through college, after four years, when you graduate, you become a commanding officer or lieutenant in the military, which means that you are leading troops. So if you can lead troops at 21 years old in the U.S. military, why can't you run for office? Why can't you run for school board? Why can't you run for state representative or state senator? Why can't you run for county commissioner? 
And why can't you even run for mayors? The youngest mayor, I think, in our nation is like 18 in one of the cities. Think about that. We need young people to be engaged in leadership so that we can change in a positive way our nation. Now, I'm, I didn't want to share doom and gloom, but I certainly want to be realistic. But I'm very excited about what happened over the last 12 years in one sense. And what I mean by that, well, I'm, I'm very proud, I should say, not excited, because I'm not proud of what we had to go through. But I'm excited about the fact that there were young people engaged in leadership. Do not let the media dictate to you what is positive or negative. Example, right now we're trying to ostracize Black Lives Matter. The leadership made a mistake and did some things that are wrong, but that does not discount the huge contribution that was made by Black Lives Matter over the last 10 years, or 10, 11, 12 years, back when Trayvon Martin first got killed. So don't let the media tell you, oh, this is an awful organization. No, it's not. After the tragic death of George Floyd, we saw demonstrations in every state in our nation. Many of those demonstrations were led by young white kids and older white mothers in all 50 states. There were demonstrations in Europe, all over Europe. There were demonstrations in New Zealand and Australia. There were demonstrations in Canada and South America all over the globe, and they were all saying what? Black Lives Matter. Now, when we see what happens in Memphis, and it was most of the officers were black officers, it lets you know that there's something deep down inside, even clearly with those officers who have a hatred for themselves. Because how in the name of God could you pull somebody out of a vehicle, never tell them what they did, and beat them to a pulp. That's a hatred that we have been programmed to have against ourselves. You know, it starts with really loving and accepting, thank you, loving and accepting yourself. Somehow we got to bring love back to the game. Because love is, one of, is what is going to help us propel. Every year, we are observing in January the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. We've been doing that now, federal holiday, since 1986. And we are working on a campaign, my wife and daughter and I and our organization, the Drum Major Institute. We're working toward the next five years, because in, year, in January of next year, my father's birthday falls on the actual, it's the third Monday of every January, by the way, but it falls on his actual birthday, January 15th. That would have been his 95th next year birthday. We're working up to the 100th birthday. And we're going to be doing some special things that you'll hear about, that we want to engage our nation and community in for the next five years to really transform this nation in a positive direction. But we need you, and you, and you, and you. We need you all to say we want to be active participants. You know, we may have to reconsider techniques that Dad used in 1955. What he did in his team, and they did it later on in the early 60s, was they called it boycotting. Now, if you looked at all the money of that trillion dollars that we spent on various products, we may have to decide, okay, we're not going to support these banks, or we're not going to support this particular company. I mean, we really have to think about that because that is what businesses understand. As long as you continue to support them indiscriminately, then they're not going to do anything. But when you challenge them to help address the issue, whether it's police brutality and misconduct, whether it is even the issues around crime. I mean, we got a fascination, and I know Arkansas, like Georgia, loves guns. There's something wrong 
when you are so in love with a gun that you are desensitized to human life and quickly pull out a gun. Somebody step on your shoe and you pull out a gun and shoot them and you don't think anything is wrong with you? We're desensitized. You know, whether we're using Twitter or, you know, tick tack, tuck tock, whatever it is. Y'all know what I'm about. I'm, I'm an older person. I'm 65 years old, so I, my daughter deals with a lot of that stuff. But all of that stuff has been used destructively. Someone has to come up with a way to creatively use it constructively because the destruction is causing people to commit suicide. The destruction is causing people to say harmful and hateful stuff with no accountability. But guess what? Any one of us, any one of you who may go into engineering or technology may be the one that creates the software, the technology, the hardware to change that. That's part of what our challenge is as we continue to move throughout this era of our nation's history. As I get ready to close, I want to leave you with a couple more challenges. I was blessed to travel with my mother and my father throughout my life. When I was, dad was killed at 10 years old by a white man. My grandmother, who you probably don't know this, my father's mother was gunned down in the church while playing the Lord's Prayer by a black man. And it would have been easy to embrace hatred. In fact, I could have hated all y'all. Just, just, I mean, but think about what that, I mean, even when you think about your facial expression, it takes more muscles to, to frown than it does to smile. But I'm thankful that I had a grandfather who taught me the value of forgiveness. He used to say, the man that killed my lovely wife nor the man that killed my son, I refuse to allow them to reduce me to hatred. I love everybody, I'm every man's brother. So I had that example in front of me. I saw him preaching weekly, preaching love, preaching forgiveness and living it, not, just, not hypocritical stuff. You know, a lot of times we, are, we say one thing and we do something else. Everything has to line up. But granddaddy taught us that. And my dad and mom taught us that. And my aunts and uncles reinforced that. And church and Sunday school reinforced that. But I'm saying to each of you, that whatever you choose to do in life, you gotta identify what that is. Dad used to say it this way. That is, if it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, well, go on and sweep streets like Michelangelo Carl Marble. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Raphael painted pictures. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of the heavens and earth would have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper that did their job well. The historian Douglas Mallet captured it another way by saying if you cannot be a pine on the top of the hill, just be a shrub in the valley, but be the best little shrub on the side of the road. Be a bush if you cannot be a tree. If you cannot be a highway, just be a trail. If you cannot be the sun, just be a star, for it isn't by size that you win or you fail. You've just got to be the best of what you are. That's our challenge. Finally, in travels with my mom, she took me to her undergraduate institution, which is Antioch College in Yellow Springs, Ohio. And at that college, there's a statue of the educator, Horace Mann. And under that statue is an inscription. And what that inscription says is, be ashamed to die until you've won a victory for humanity. I was 14 years old when I first went to Antioch. It took me a while to digest and understand, well, how do you break this down so that it's applicable to anyone? And so after visiting three or four times, seeing that inscription, what I came to was, you know, we can win a victory on our street, every last one of us. We can win a victory 
in our school. We can win victories in our places of worship. Some of us may win victories in our cities. Some may win victories in our state. Some may win victories in our nation, and others may win victories in our world. All those words mean are be ashamed to die until you have done a little something to make the world in which we all must live a little better than it was when you arrived. Thank you and may God bless each and every one of you always. Students, one second, we are going to wrap up very shortly, very shortly. Give us one second. All right. So, on behalf of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, we would like to thank Mr. King for sharing those words of wisdom to, to be the son of a world-renowned activist and take the time of your day to walk the streets of, your, of our university just as your father did Many years ago, we say thank you. To show our appreciation, we would like to have our, a special presentation by President Arian Wallace, freshman class president at this time. Uh, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, my name is Ariane Wallace. I'm the freshman class president here, but as of uh, February 25th, I was elected to serve my third term as the AR Youth and College State Division president for the NAACP. So today, right here, I have my NAACP pin, and I also want, wanted to symbolize the relationship that Dr. King had as a member of the NAACP, and I want to give you with this university bag. So when you go back to Georgia, you got something to take with you and be comfortable on that plane, okay? Yeah. Thank you. As we come to a close, we will now hear for, from our leader and chief of our Chancellor Alexander to give final remarks and our UAPB ROTC will retire the colors. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. We are grateful tonight for you, Martin Luther King III, for that most inspiring message here tonight. I would like to express my appreciation to you and to everyone for joining us today and supporting this great event and celebrating this important day in the life of UAPB this important month, which is Black History Month, and this important year, which is the 150th of our university's existence. We hope that you've enjoyed the program as much as we have. We're so pleased and delighted to have had such a dynamic speaker on our campus this evening as Mr. Martin Luther King III to help us close out a month-long celebration. Thank you so much, sir, for traveling all the way to Arkansas. And to join us for this special historic occasion. For it was 65 years ago that your father, the late great civil rights leader, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr was here to deliver the commencement address for the class of 1958. And it was eight years ago that your sister, Reverend Bernice King, spoke here. And here you are today, 
So again today, we honor the King family. And on behalf of the entire UAPB family, we would like to present you with a small token of our appreciation of Golden Lion Pride. At this time, we'd also like to recognize some folks who are in the arena tonight. I'd like to thank, of course, my family, my wife Veronica and my son David. There they are. <laughs> Chancellor Emeritus Dr. Carolyn Blakely is here tonight. the mayor of the great city of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Mayor Shirley Washington. The eighth district state senator of the great state of Arkansas, Senator Stephanie Flowers. And I'm pleased to say there are many flowers here tonight, family of the flowers, who have a tradition of civil rights activism within the family. We'd also like to recognize the Reverend Jesse Turner, who's a member of our Board of Visitors and a champion for civil rights. We'd like to recognize the Vice President of the AMNN UAPB National Alumni Association, Ms. Janice Roberts. We'd also like to recognize, for it was just, seems like a few days ago, we were here honoring the life of one of our foremost leaders of this university, Dr. Lawrence Davis, Jr. I'd like to recognize his family who's here tonight, his nephew, Ronald Davis, sister, Janice Kearney, and their families. I'd also like to recognize, we've already recognized Bill Walker, you know, he is the son of Sonny Walker, a graduate of this university and a civil rights activist. So Bill, you're carrying on a torch. And I hope I don't leave out anybody because I'm gonna be in trouble. We have also, and all other elected officials, dignitaries, I see, I see Dr. Hertz, I see Dr. Hall, uh, all you dignitaries out there. Thank you for joining us tonight. Last but certainly not least, we'd like to thank as well uh, Dean Dorsey, Frank Dorsey II, and show our appreciation for him and the members of this program committee, all of our program participants. You know who you are and where you are. You've done a great job here tonight. And <clears throat> before we bring our annual Black History program to a close, I'd like to pay tribute to and honor those on whose mighty shoulders we stand. Those who have sacrificed their lives, paved the way, and had the courage to make valuable contributions to this university community, the state, and the nation. And at this special time in history, we look to kick off this university's sesquicentennial celebration, the 150th anniversary of commemorating and celebrating 150 years of excellence that it has brought to the state of Arkansas, the nation and the world. This university was established in 1873 in the decade following the abolition of slavery. 
as an institute for former slaves and their children to have the access and the opportunity to receive a higher education. So tonight, as we celebrate Black History Month, we commence a year-long celebration of this university that began in 1873 as Branch Normal College and later in 1927 transitioned to Arkansas Agricultural, Mechanical, and Normal College before it merged in 1972 with the University of Arkansas system to become the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. The 150-year celebration is more than recognizing chronological years. It's about appreciating this institution was created not by accident, but by divine providence with the singular mission to be a tool to uplift African Americans. Our founders recognized that the education of black people would ensure not merely survival, but that those graduates to come would thrive. So clearly it is our cornerstone. Filled by mission, we also recognize the significant milestones in history, including both the growth in and on the campus, and also by way of the individuals who have matriculated through this institution. We are now embarking on an $80 million campus improvement project. We have created, in the past, an aquaculture and agriculture center of excellence, a regulatory science center of excellence, where faculty and students are conducting cutting edge research while also serving the community. Some of our stellar alumni who've been a part of this growth, Dr. Samuel Kuntz, Pamela Smith, Ray Jean Montague, Dr. Samuel Massey, Byron Vaughns, Mamie Parker, and many, many, many others. And over these 150 years, there's some unique experiences that have taken place on this campus that have lasting effects on the Golden Lion family and the entire state and nation. One of those we've already mentioned, the visit of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which was his only visit to a college or university in Arkansas. Another is the welcoming of the country's first black first lady, Michelle Obama. Those are lasting memories. And we've also had some historic moments on the field. Who can forget the Golden Lions historical victory in the SWAT in football? So for the 150th year, we'll be centered around these themes, mission that birthed our institution, the significant milestones in place and people, and lasting memories that were made and continue to be made. So on that note, we pay homage to mission we celebrate our milestones and reflect on our memories with our commemorative brand. Happy sesquicentennial, happy 150th. We're on a road to higher heights, and there ain't no stopping us now. Thank you.
All right. So at this time, I will ask you if you could all please stand for the retiring of the colors and the singing of our alma mater.